Hello my people, welcome back to the show. It's me again, Sophie Uplift, and I welcome you all back to today's episode. Yeah, we've been talking about social, social, social rules. Yes, it's because I really want to add value to our society by dropping, recording this podcast for us. We all need to learn about the society. We need to make our world a better place. Yes. And if you are joining us for the very first time, just click on the subscribe button. Subscription is free on YouTube. Drop your comments, like this podcast, and share the link with your friends. Let people listen and learn from it. Again, we would continue on social rules. Yes, I really can't tell when this episode on social rules is going to come to an end because the more I decide to talk about another topic, the more different things comes my way. Ah, babe, girl, you need to talk about this. You need to talk about this. And this is why I am really, really doing this. So the first social rules I'm going to talk about in this podcast is that when people help you, when people help you with little things, say thank you. Your dro- pen dropped on the floor and they help you to pick it. Say thank you. Say thank you when people help you. It's, it's you know, it's like you giving a chilled water to someone coming from under the sun. You know how refreshing that water would be? They will bless you. They will pray for you. They will say, oh my God. They will be so happy that it came across you. Oh, you offer them this water. That's how the thank you would be to them. So, I was able to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Sir. Yeah. Because you realize that it is less of a burden when people help you do something that you are supposed to do with your own effort, with your energy. And someone has done it willingly. Come on. They deserve a thank you. They deserve a thank you. And another thing is. When you want to criticize your friend. People or someone. Your your employee. Criticize them privately. You can even defend them. Publicly. Yeah. In the presence of the clients or the customer. Try to defend them. Oh, madam, it's because of this. You're really sorry. But once the customer or the client is gone, you can then criticize them privately or, you know, scold them privately. You don't have to... When you do criticize them publicly, you kill the sense of... the feeling of confidence, of understanding they have or they would have with you. Okay, and there is... Almost never a reason to comment on someone's weight or their their height, their present condition. Just say, wow, you look fantastic. Because if they really want to talk about losing weight, they know. If they really want to lose their weight, they know the way to the gym. They know how to do personal exercise in their rooms. So you don't say, ah, why are you so big like this? Really, if you tell that to me, I will sit you down and I'll give you lectures on why I am fat and why it is none of your business. If you really want to talk to people, do it in a respectful manner. Do it. Yes, that's the word I can use, respectful. Do it with much respect, with much humility. That you really want to say this, not because you know it or you think it is wrong or right. Even when someone is wrong, re- correct them respectfully, humbly. Not that you do it in such a way that it would even annoy the person you are correcting. That I'll, I know you want to correct me, but you don't have to be rude about it. You don't have to insult me. You don't have to make me feel bad, like I'm actually dumb or something. So please, let's work on that too. Ah. This thing, I think it's usually happening in public transport. And I know that the moment 
it's the 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 time is gonna stop is when i have my own private car so that i won't have to be in this kind of mess you know when you show someone a photo or a picture on your phone they will swipe left or right ah let me see the other pictures you have on your phone you would do that and be i don't want to be too harsh okay I don't want to be too harsh, but please, when someone show you, shows you a picture on their phone or a file or whatever on their phone, please don't be tempted. Let your finger stay behind your back. Yes. Don't try to swipe left or swipe right. To know what's more, it's in there. Okay. It doesn't. It's. It shows that you don't have home training. I'm sorry if that word is too big. Yes, but we really need to give. You know this. That reminds me, I'm sorry to branch. When people talk about home training, it is not really what your parents taught you at home or all the kinds of learning, the trust. You may be a good cook, you may you may be but your character, the manner of your approach may be so poor. And this is when you you stand again to correct yourself, to teach yourself. It doesn't have to be on what your parents I've been teaching you. See, some of our parents are old-fashioned. They don't know what is going on this day. But they can't. Teach, they cannot teach you every day. In schools, lecturers always endeavor to update their syllabus because some things are people don't need some things again. People already know some things before they even came to school. You need to teach people one things they, they've never heard or they need to know or the things they will meet in the future. So when you talk about home training, it is about you training yourself. To act right in the society so let's come back to what we were discussing yes we might get carried away so another thing is if, if, if a colleague tells you that oh I have an appointment with a doctor today please don't ask them what happened Why are you going to the hospital are you sick of course I'm sick that's why I'm going to the hospital and it is not every sick person that goes to the hospital some people are going to the hospital to prevent the sickness some people go to hospital to do checkup. Oh, I hope I'm fit. I hope I'm healthy. But why do you have to know about their health condition? Health is one thing people don't like to share. It is personal. For example, someone is going is dealing with stage three um cancer. I don't know. Yeah, there should be a third level on of cancer. Stage three rather. And you want them to just open it up to you. Even some people, the, the health condition they are having, they are going through, their family members don't know about it because they don't want to worry them. But you just open your mouth wide open. Like the like the corruption, like the mouth of the corruption going on it's in of the economy of Nigeria. Just open your mouth wide. Okay, why are you going to the hospital? Are you sick? Do you have a dick? No. I want to go and lie down in the hospital. That's why I'm going there. We need to question what well, the kind of questions we ask people. Okay? Don't be comfortable talking about their personal illness. And if they really want you to know, they will tell you without your inquisitiveness. Without you asking. Okay? So, another thing is, we should endeavor to treat the cleaners with the same respect as the CEO, as the boss, as the manager, whatever. Nobody is impressed at how rude you can treat someone below you. But people will notice if you treat them with respect. Imagine if you are using a ma or you are trying to help a cleaner carry uh, a cleaning tools. You open the door for her, show her respect. Come on, people will notice that, wow, that person is respectful. Yeah, be proud of yourself. They'll be proud of you that, oh, that person is a nice person. is respectful. But you want people to notice you on how you were shouting. Ah, oh, madam, why would you step on me with your stinky leg, with your dirty, your filthy body? Why would you touch me? No, that's not how life works, okay? Don't be rude. Treat people nicely. And if a person is speaking directly to you, Staring at your phone can be considered rude in the court of law. Yes. Someone is trying to talk to you. 
see whatever they what they are even talking about me may not be of interest to you but just give them that little attention oh for this person to take that time to want to talk to me or tell me about something bothering them it's just they have you know they love me and or they really have this confidence in me to want to share something with you so please treat people with love and respect and this one mind your business unless anything involves you directly just stay out of it if people are fighting beside your room they're raising their voice you can't just say oh please you're disturbing us with your noise so but you entering their room and asking them questions that does not concern you ah what's happened why are you fighting what's happened Kilo she- madam ah sister rose just is wrong unless they call you that ah please come and be the witness did you know what happened yesterday then you can speak but when they don't ask you just you know plug in your earphone and continue it's none of your business if they don't call you okay that's why it's called business and also never give advice unless they ask you yes Maybe someone is, you know, having a a bad time with, or they're having an issue with their parents. And you just, you didn't even ask anything. They didn't tell you anything. Just be like, ah, since you and your mommy are fighting and you're not sleeping in the house, I would advise you just go and, you know, go and tell her that, who is she, who is he, why would he be talking to you like that? Or just go and take your own apartment. They don't ask for your advice. Sometimes, when people are emotional, when they are sensitive, you know, when they are reacting to a kind of situation, their sense of thinking becomes irrational. They don't think straight. They think based on their emotion, how they're feeling at that moment. And you may end up giving them a very wrong advice. Because they've told you that, oh, this is what happened. Can you imagine? Don't advise them if they don't. Unless they say, oh, please, can you advise me on this? Then you can advise them. Don't be an advisor on every case, on every incident. You may not understand the full story, but you just open your mouth and say, let me add. It's not a bad thing to advise. Actually, it's a very good thing. Yes, you tend to help to calm their nerve. You, you make them feel safe that, yes, I'm not in this alone. But don't do it when they don't ask you. Know the line, know the gap where you should speak and when you should keep quiet. And when you, you are meeting someone after a long time, unless you, they want to talk about the reason why they departed or left suddenly, don't ask them immediately. Give them a time, give them a break to want to share with you. Maybe they were your neighbor for in the last five years and you don't know what happens then don't ask them immediately give them time to take a to even know you more because your relationship has become you know which word can i use to describe this it has become a kind of it has been ghosted yes you don't really know much about them and vice versa so don't just push them to telling you what has been happening in their life for the past five years? I never talk about your riches in the midst of the poor. And similarly, don't talk about your children in the midst of the barren. Don't talk about how good your business is going in the midst of someone who doesn't even have a business. Don't talk about your academic paras when in the midst of people that have not even gotten admission into the university. I'm not saying they may feel bad for you or they, they won't be happy for you. But come on, we are human beings. They'll feel disappointed in themselves. The, oh my God. If this is my age mate. He's doing it. He's making it. He's giving it. What is wrong with me? You are giving them a room to even look down on themselves the more. You're not giving them the end of encouragement. It's like you're pushing them. Like, oh, come on. I'm telling you now, in the next one year, if you don't pop top up your game, I'm going to leave you behind because I can't be 
can't be friends with someone who's not even up to my standard. So don't talk about these things. But the means of people who have not gotten to your level. It's not fair. Try to put yourself in that shoe that imagine if I was the one in this kind of situation, would I be happy about it? And lastly but not the least, when someone sends you a give a, a good a good message or after reading a good message, try to say thanks for the message. Let's learn how to use the word thank you okay and so thank you guys for listening for always listening to my podcast you know sometimes some listeners will just call me directly oh i'm so impressed ah, i really love you know you know you know you know that kind of and i appreciate you all god bless you thank you should be told it's this cause it's this comment that dangers me to always come and drop podcasts imagine i don't receive any comments any call i'll be like Am I the only one listening to my podcast? And you wouldn't, you know, feel encouraged. And I thank you all for always doing this. And God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share this YouTube link. Thank you and God bless Nigeria.